Good evening. Once again, I'm back. Uh, my name is Helen Pradia, and I am with the Bridges of Cypress Creek. I'm one of the resident educators, and I'm so glad that you joined me tonight. This is going to be interesting. Interesting. I want to talk to you tonight about what every woman should have in her car in case of an emergency. And uh, to do that, when you're on the road and you're traveling uh, and you're by yourself, things can get real dangerous for you. And when you least expect it, something can happen. Your car could break down or you run into some type of trouble. So what can you do about it? And if you're like me, you're not a mechanic. And what really gets me is when you call for your roadside assistance, it may take them two hours to get there. And no woman wants to sit on the side of a road at 9, 10, 11 o'clock at night by themselves. And let me throw this in right now. Putting your hazard light on. When you have your hazard lights on, after so long, it pulls your battery down. And so what happens is your battery is pulled down and now you're gonna have to really get a jump, okay? I've had that happen to me before. So when you have your hazard light on, be really cautious and careful. Good evening to those of you that are joining me uh, from Bryan, Texas, and also from one of our, from the city of Houston. We're glad to have you, Miss Holmes. We're glad to have you, Miss Miss Neal. So okay, if you can share this with someone. I think this is good information. So I'm going to be showing you some things. I went and I purchased a kit for an emergency that I will carry in my car. Now what I do is, of course, I would have it in my car, not in the trunk, especially at night. So I would have it in the car with me just in case. Hopefully you never have to use these, okay? So we're going to talk about I have a few items. What I did is I bought, could you hand me that bag? I have a helper tonight and uh, thank you. I bought a kit, nice bag, nice bag. And so everything can stay neat. And I purchased this off of Amazon and it was less than $125. And what it's giving me is a, a first secure kit. And in this, there are 90 items, and we're going to try to cover them, okay? Let's talk about it. First, what you have is what's called a life hammer. And the life hammer, or you can use it for a seatbelt escape. And let me tell you about this. I'm reading my notes because I want to tell you correctly. This small item can be a, literally can be a lifesaver. Kept near the driver's seat via Velcro, a Velcro or double-sided tape, it can allow you to break your window or if you end up underwater or otherwise trapped in your car, it can also cut your seat belt. Here's the other end of it. I hope you see it where you can cut your seat belt. A notoriously tough bit of fabric, but this will do the job. Time is of the essence. When you're short on air, or the car is on fire, or there are other danger looming, get out quickly. It's made so that it's much easier with this cheap and simple tube. This is called a life hammer. Okay, let's move on. Then we have what is called a socket. I'm gonna open it and take it out. This is a socket and screw set, okay? And let me talk about that. This is something you need to have in your vehicle with you. Even in the modern cars, sometimes things can come loose, whether from vibration, age, or other reasons. Often a simple tightening, okay? Yeah, they're all in here. I hope you can see these. I'm trying to show them. I'm working one by one, okay? So you can see 
This can be especially helpful with a with a loose uh, battery, terminal connection, a slip hose camp, clamp, or other simple and obvious problems that can happen under the hood. Even if you're not an automotive whiz, popping the hood and looking for obvious problems like this is easy. Just, just put your eyes on it, on the major system, and scan for something loose or disconnected. Get a set with multiple socket sizes and screwdriver tips for the most flexibility. Be sure to familiarize yourself. I'm gonna set this right here and I'm gonna pick it up later. Make sure you familiarize yourself with what you have. See, there are different things you even have, and I'll get to that, you even have a knife. You never know what's going to happen, okay? So you have things that you need to help you just in case of an emergency. Next, you have duct tape. You know, I used to see my husband use this. Duct tape, this might uh, sound a bit too simple, but duct tape can fix a myriad of ills from damaged body work after a fender bender to temporarily emergency or temporary emergency fixes on a hose or other part. Duct tape, see it ladies? Duct tape can patch your car back together long enough to limp it to the repair shop and keep you from being stranded or even sending for a tow truck. That can be very expensive. Even when you have a what, triple A, sometimes they only go so far or so many miles before they charge you an extra fee. So get you some duct tape and keep it. The next thing we have is what's called a toe strap. This is a, and I'm not going to take it apart. It's very large. And this toe strap, it's a puller. It's called a toe rope also. And this is 10,000 pound capacity toe. You never know when you may need to be towed. Can you, I hope you can see it. As I said, I'm not going to take it apart because I have to put it back together and I may not do it as well. But this is something you will need in your car. So this length of a super strong fabric can be used for a lot more than hauling your buddy's old truck or car or from one weed infested yard to another. It's great to have. With a tow strap, you can move an otherwise disabled car short to medium distances. Think a few miles rather than across town or to the next state with nothing more than the help of a passing stranger in a pickup, okay? If you're that stranger in a pickup, you can use it to offer help to someone else. But a toe strap, super strong nature, also make it a good all-purpose length of tie down or a rescue rope. And when you get this, be sure and read the manual that you have. Then we have, everybody knows what these are. We have jumper cables, okay? Now, let me tell you a transparent moment. I'm not good with these. So what I did, I invested in what's called, I hope you can see it, it's called jump and carry. And what this does is it allows me, let me do this. I said I wasn't, but let me do it. To give you an idea, I've had to help my neighbors. What it is, I can give myself, if my battery goes dead, I can give my own self a jump with just this. I have everything I need. It's also uh, will allow me to, uh, I have to keep it charged. I can use it as a power bank. 
for my phone to charge my cell phone. So I, once again, I shop Amazon. I purchased this off of Amazon and it was $117. I promise you it is worth it. So I don't need it. I don't need another car to help me. These are good to have. I'm not saying don't get them, but what if there's no one there to help you? No, no one is there to help give you a jump. With this, you can do it yourself, okay? I keep it charged, and as I said, I've been able to help some of my neighbors, and it's called a jump and carry. When you have a dead battery, it is frustrating, whatever the reason is. Sim such a simple piece of equipment, and yet its failure can completely disable your car. Even if the battery itself can no longer hold the charge, a set of jumper cables or a jump and carry can get you back on the road to the nearest shop. Choose a heavy gauge cable with durable, high quality spring load camps, clamps, and I'll show you again, on each side, okay? Avoid the kind that plugs into the cigarette lighter. That may not work. Uh, it may not be enough voltage. A proper set of jumper cables is more useful and will work with a wide array of cars. And as I said, if there isn't anyone there to help you, you can do it yourself with your own jump and carry. I showed you the knife that was in the little tool kit. And um, it's good to have protection. I just thought I'd throw that in. But sometimes it's not connected when you need to make or resecure. But things you need to separate or get rid of. That's where a knife will come in handy. Say you got you get a length of rope or other road debris wrapped around an axle, or a portion of your plastic bumper is broken or in a fender bender, but it's rubbing against your tire and it can't be re-secured with duct tape, just cut off the fending part and get back on the road. Be sure to have the car checked as soon as possible. And this will help you to try to get yourself from a stranded situation. The knife, like many other items in the kit that I've shown you that I purchased, the first secure kit, it can also help you do uh, some, it end up some stranded situation and you can get yourself out of it. Okay, let me move on. Now, most of us have, I'm gonna show this picture. It's fix a flat and I've seen it and I've seen my husband use it, my son use it, not I, but they would, when my tire was low, and to get me to where I need to be, the fixer flat will help me to get where I, where I need to be. And what happens is one of the basic tools in human experience is using it can be literally endless from opening food containers to cutting things. But And this is talking about the knife. But when your tire has gone out, I want to show you this. Let me find it. And it's called a tire inflator uh, so I have so much here it's right here I apologize I have a small table to work with tire inflator or seal and that's what this is it is deluxe tire plug kit so if you don't have a um, fix a flat this will work many cars come with spare tires but is their spare still inflated? Is it inflated to the proper pressure? What do you do if your spare tire fails? These are all problems that can be reduced or eliminated if you keep a can of Fix-A-Flat or you can have you the tire inflator sealer with you at all times. And what you do, it tells you, you can step one, Put the rasp tool into the hole to roughen and clean the inside of the hole. Secondly, 
coat the needle tool with the rubber cement, which is this right here, and insert the string halfway into the eye of the needle. Thirdly, insert the needle with the repair string centered in the hole. Push the string approximately two thirds of the way into the hole. And then what you're gonna do is cut off the excess string, keeping the excess about five millimeter. Everything you need is right here if you end up with a hole in your tire and you're not near discount or auto zone or whomever you may go to okay now the sticky compound this does a magic it's act it's actually magical however it shouldn't be relied on past an emergency don't use it and say i'm good to go no go get your tire replaced at a reputable shop and don't be surprised if you're hit with extra fee to clean the dry inflator seal or goop off the wheel also. This is going to help you, okay? Let's see what else I, want, I can show you on tonight. Then you have the tire pressure gauge. This tire pressure gauge is what you can use to see if you have the right amount of air in your tire. And this one tool in the kit, you should use it most uh, at weekly to check the tire pressure. Keeping tabs on the pressure in your tires can prevent un inflation, under inflation and related, and related blowouts from happening. In your door of your car, there's usually either a, a, a metal piece or maybe down that'll tell you how much air you should have in each tire. It tells you how much should be in the front and how much should be in the back. So when you know how much air you should have, when you check your air pressure, then you will know what you need. What I have found out, when the weather is bad and it's really cold or all of a sudden really hot, you will see the air pressure, there is some differences. I have a light that comes on that let me know that my air pressure is low. It's not that your tire is bad, it's the weather. So always check your tires to make sure uh, that you have as much air as prescribed for your car. Pay special attention to the tire pressure around the changes, and I just said that in the season. And let me show you this while I'm, I'm talking about the tire pressure. When you need air, this is called, me, I call it my air pump. I don't know if you all remember when we needed air, we would go to one of the uh, gas stations and we had to put 25 cents in the machine to get air to put it in our tire. Now, I don't know what it is now, but it used to be, and that is back in the day. But now we have these uh, gadgets, which are helpful. Plug it into your cigarette lighter and you can put air, it monitors how much air you need and it also monitor what you have and how much you're putting in to let you know now you have exactly what you need. Now this one that I have is a 250 PSI and it's a 12 volt. And you can see there's something small, you have it in your car. So if your tire is, is low, I have, I have another one also that is in my car and it's a little bit larger. I can say that I've had to loan it to others. I allowed them to use it and it was helpful. It put air in their tire. It gave them enough air to make it to point B from point A. So that is something you need to have also. And if you're stopped at night, you need to have a little flare or something, you know, to put out so they can see you. And I'm gonna read these things that's on here so you will know what we have. And this right here is a reflective, can you see it? A reflective warning triangle. And when lights hit it, they will know someone is there and they're having some issues. These are good to have in your car. And this came in this kit that I had purchased. Also, this is like a flashlight. It's small, 
It runs on batteries and you can have it on your wrist as you're working on your car. I really do hope that you will not have to use any of this or you're not stranded at night by yourself. I hope so. But you will have this to help you so that you can get where you need. This, these cords right here, they give you two. These are called bungee cords, okay? And this will help you pull when you need to and what you need to do, okay? It's going to help you when you're having trouble with your car. And the bungee is going to help you. You know what bungee does? It's to pull and it has to hold so that you don't get hit by a piece that you're pulling or from your car to fly off. These are very handy to have. Also, what else do we have? We have um, the three air compressor, and I think I was showing you all that, and that's what I showed earlier. They call it an air compressor, and that's gonna be most helpful for you. Then we have here cable ties. You don't know when you may need to tie something together until you can make it to a shop. Let me say this to you. Learn how to use these items. Learn to and read to understand what they are for. How do I use them that they will be effective? These are a, a cable ties, okay? That's what they're called, cable ties. So you can tie whatever you need your cable together so they will work. Maybe it won't stay connected, uh, but you can use it. Sometimes your cables just need to be clean, okay? And I've seen where people have taken a can of Coca-Cola and put it there on the cable and clean their cables off. And then once they retach, it's going to run like new. Now, while you're doing all of these things, ladies, let's protect our nails. I know these are not the cutest things in the world, but let's protect our nails and our hands, okay? We know that our hands are soft and delicate. But in the kit that I purchased, the gloves came with them, okay? And I wanted to show you even the batteries for the, the lamp light came. So I didn't say, oh, I don't have batteries. You know we do that. So it's already here for us. Look and see what you have in your kit and how to use it. I want to also tell you, in the kit, is a, it's a first aid kit, okay? And what comes in the kit, I did not open it, but there are 48 items in this little kit. You have 24 adhesive bandages, two gauze pads, one tourniquet, two non-woven triangle bandage, two... PBT bandage, one medical tape, one pair of scissors, five safety pins, and 10 cotton swabs. That's what's in. Everything that's on this table came in the kit that I purchased. And I purchased it because I wanted to share with my friends, my sisters, my female friends. I want you to know, we never know when an emergency will arrive. But when it does, you're going to be prepared. You're going to be safe. And it shows an independence level where ladies, we can do anything we want. But I must stress, learn what the items are. Learn how to use the items. I would never have thought of having something to cut a seatbelt. I've heard of people being stuck in the car and the seatbelt would not unlock to let them out. They were stuck and they're stranded. And trust me, you can't wiggle out of the seatbelt. But now, if, and I God forbid it happens, but I have something to protect me. Not only can I break my window, I'd rather break the window and save my life or someone that needs me and break the window to save their life than to see something drastically happen. Then you have where you can cut that seatbelt 
and you know the seat belts are very tough, but this will cut your seat belt that will get you to safety. These are things that you would need. And let me tell you this, they have larger kits. This kit that I purchased was 90 piece uh, kit. It says emergency roadside uh, kit, defender series, first secure. And here's the, once again, here's the bag. Everything is neatly placed in this bag. So it's going to be neatly in your car. And when you're driving, like you have your purse with you nearby, you need to have this with you nearby, just in case. You don't want for something to happen that, and it's night and you have to get out, go to the back of your car, open the trunk, and get your kit. You never know what can happen. And ladies, you know it is dangerous out there for us. Everybody that stops is not our friend. And everyone that wants to help you really don't mean to help you. So ladies, be safe. Be secure. Think smart and think wise. Protect yourselves. Learn how to use these items. Always there's some... I never would have thought that I would have to know how to use these things because my son, uh, my grandsons, you know, they're at my husband. But what happens when people are not there for you, that they're working or they're on their various jobs and they can't always leave their jobs? Or what if it's late at night? You can do these things. Carry what you need. Keep your phone charged so that if you have to do, dial 911, you still can, but in the meantime, you have something to help yourself. Well, once again, I always have a lot of information, but I'm out of time. So I want you to be sure, please go out and purchase. You don't have to get this one. You can just ask, what would be a good emergency roadside kit for you? This is just a suggestion, but only you know what's best, what you need. And I hope you will. Well, my time is up. And I'm so glad that you joined me. I hope I said something to help you, that trigger your mind and say, this is what I need to do. Once again, my name is Helen Pradia. I'm one of the resident educators at the Bridges of Cypress Creek here in Houston, Texas. So I'm glad you joined me and I hope the rest of your week is the greatest week you've had in a very long time. Talk to you again on next Monday. Good night.